Well, Friday at the Monaco Grand Prix is, as per tradition, always a day off. But the world of Formula One never really stops, and there's plenty to talk about. A big talking point today is Renault. They've admitted about a problem that was holding them back in the past few races related to the Conrod. So I'm joined by Jonathan Noble to talk a little bit about what Renault's problem was and what we should expect from them in the coming races. Now, John, can you explain exactly what Renault have said about the, this problem that they've, they've revealed this weekend? Yeah, it's obviously been a disappointing season for them. They came into 2019 hoping to make a move forward, move clear of the midfield, close down on the top three teams. It's not happened. They're eighth in the standings, so it's been a bit of a, a poor showing from them. Uh, it all went wrong in Bahrain. We saw Nico Hulkenberg and Daniel Ricciardo stop within seconds of each other, a, a huge psychological blow to the team. But it's emerged here yesterday. Um, we spoke to Cyril Abitable that actually Hulkenberg's problem was a Conrod failure, uh, which is quite a serious problem. You know, a big structural part of the, the engine was broken. They had to wind down performance. It's held them back. And only now are they finally getting on top of what they need to do and can start pushing the engine on a little bit more. And of course, judging the performance of the Renault power unit package has been difficult this year. It's had Red Bull as its standard bearer for previous years, but now just supplying the works team and, of course, the McLaren team. But John, we've heard things like this from Renault before, haven't we? Throughout the hybrid era, going all the way back to 2014, there's been a litany of problems, underperformance, there's always something that's identified, it's solved, but then there's some other problems. So how seriously should we should we take them? Uh, I think they've, they've adopted a different mentality this year. The, you know, the, the end of the Red Bull relationships given them, they're more in control of the message now, they're more in control of communications, they're not facing endless headlines of, you know, Red Bull criticises Renault again. Um, I think that gave them a reason to try and push on with performance a bit more rather than be conservative on reliability. They pushed a bit too far. You know, the Conrad failure was a, was a, a big blow. Um, it took them until Spain to make the, the new parts, the, the more reliable parts, come on board. Uh, and then on top of that, they haven't had a, you know, a top-line chassis to compare their performance with. In the past, Red Bull has pushed on, been at the front, so they knew what was possible. This year, they've been distracted by the engine and their car hasn't been sensational either. And of course, if you look at the performance of Renault, you mentioned they're eighth in the championship, they're eighth on average performance. The, the factory team, of course, that has the best finish of a couple of seventh places. Ricardo's had one, Hulkenberg's had one. So it, it, there's a lot of pressure on Renault and expectation, isn't there? Because it's not just the engine side. Enstone, they've invested a huge amount there, lots of recruits, but still the overall performance of the car is near as makes no difference, exactly the same. They are eighth fastest and they're within 0.1% in terms of, uh, of their relative pace. I think it's growing pains they're going through. It's been a massive expansion. They've gone from 400 people, I think, to around 700 people. And when you're managing that that change of infrastructure, that change of staff, you know, problems happen. You get log jams, and you know, Cyril also revealed to us that they've had a log jam at Enstone. They've had new parts that have left the design office. They've been ticked off, and they've somehow stalled in the system. They've not come to the car. And um, finally, post Barcelona test, some of the bits finally got through the system. They've been cleared at Barcelona. They're coming for the French Grand Prix. So Cyril says that the timing of everything now, the engine should get wound up, we'll see more in Canada. Uh, and those new chassis upgrades, which he says are fairly substantial, are coming for the French Grand Prix. And he, he's adamant that this is, this is where they can make the step, this is where they can re-establish themselves in fourth place and pull clear. And I think the, the one shining light for them is that no one's grabbed hold of that fourth place in the constructors mm. so far this season. McLaren are currently there, but they've had some bad weekends. They had a you know, difficult time in China. Spain wasn't brilliant, but they signed somehow managed to save it with the, the late safety car. Um, Haas have been quick, but had their race problems. So I think it's far from over, but I think if Renault don't make that step forward in France, then I think the pressure is going to be unbearable. But even talking about France as this, this <laughs> zero point again, that puts huge pressure on. That's a huge race. So obviously, they're involved in the promotion. They've been doing these roadshow events both last year and, and this year to promote the race. So that's going to be a very intense weekend, isn't it? With all the scrutiny from the board and you know Renault spending all this money and wanting to see an improvement. Absolutely. I, I said to Cyril yesterday, uh, you know, why, why have you set up France as a, as a big event for this, this big step forward? Surely, you know, big pressure that weekend. You have all the... The big chiefs are going to be there, the focus will be on you, and you just heaped more pressure on yourselves. So that's just unfortunately the timing. If the new parts were ready for Canada, if the new parts were ready for Austria or Silverstone, we'd have done it there. Unfortunately, coincidence means it's coming for France, uh, so it's going to be fascinating to see how it goes for them. And coming back to the, the power unit package, he's also made some claims about how competitive the engine is, that in race trim it's basically, basically there, qualifying trim the, the so-called party modes that uh, that to varying, varying degrees the engine manufacturers all have they put a big effort into for this year and that seems to be an area where they're still lacking but there has been a, a step hasn't he? he he was putting numbers on on how much they've gained this year yeah i think 
the, the real issue is we've not seen the proper gains. Uh, they had Australia where they were, were able to use it, but qualifying didn't go very well for them. They, they knocked themselves out early. And Bahrain they had the problems, and after that, everything was wound down. Um, he says that their projections now, based on GPS data, what they know their, their engine can do, is they've made 40 kilowatt gains so far this season. They're aiming for 50. So that's about 53, 54 brake horsepower, isn't it? Yeah, and they're, they're convinced that in race mode, they're now a match for Mercedes and Ferrari. Uh, in qualifying mode, I think everyone accepts Ferrari have got something, they've got an extra special party mode that lifts them clear. Um, so we don't really know you know how big that gap is and you know Honda are behind at the moment but you know Renault aren't, aren't uh, being complacent they think Honda are coming as well so it's getting intense but Cyril is clear they're no longer behind Mercedes and Ferrari in the races. Well some bold statements there from Renault huge amount of pressure for the French Grand Prix but I think all Formula One fans want to see Renault both the team and the engine supplier up there fighting with Mercedes and Ferrari so we can but hope that the performance is really there the reliability is there and finally in this engine era we'll see Renault show its true colours.